many QRP kits come short form. You get the circuit board and the components, but not necessarily the box. That reduces shipping costs and gives the builder a bit of flexibility. But what sort of choices are you going to make? Is your radio going to be very small or is it going to be in a bigger box so you can do repairs and make modifications more easily? It depends on how you're going to use it and what the radio is for. Then there's the choice of material, metal versus plastic. A metal box offers good RF shielding, but it may be somewhat heavier. Metal boxes have gaps, which you definitely don't want if you're operating the radio on a beach or near the water. In contrast, a plastic box might be better sealed, and also lighter. Metal boxes have corners, which could tear tents or the cases they're stored in. Plastic are more often rounded, and is much preferable. You also don't want screws to stick out. Recessed is a much better choice. Notice the gap between the display and the box? That's bad, especially if you're using the radio portable at a beach or elsewhere where it's windy and there's sand around. The display itself is unprotected. Again a no-no. Either use perspex or possibly plastic book covering to protect it. Turn the radio around and the knobs stick out a long way. That's good for ergonomics and grip for a home station transceiver, but for portable it's unwelcome. If you're carrying the radio in a backpack or similar, the knobs risk being bent and damaged. Instead, use flatter knobs or possibly even controls on the side of the radio instead. It's amazing how much space you can save with those measures. Then of course there's the sockets. With these, you can see right into the units of the radio. Again, probably not a good idea if you're using the radio under extreme conditions. Get sealed sockets, or avoid them if you can. For instance, building a key control onto the transceiver box itself. What do you do about the batteries? These radios have a battery compartment inside. That's a particularly bad choice, in my opinion, for the FT817. Because of the radio's high received current consumption, the internal batteries do not last all that long. It just makes the radio heavier. I think space for the FT817's internal battery pack would have been better spent on an inbuilt antenna coupler or something like that. This little 10 tech radio is somewhat better in that regard because of its lower received current consumption. Still, I've always used external batteries with it. If you are going to build a radio with internal batteries, make sure the lid can be removed easily, preferably without a screwdriver. All the radios I build have a 2.1mm power socket, which I connect the battery to via a short lead. A very important choice is where your panel is going to be. These radios have the panel on the top, whereas these have it on the front. Radios with sockets on the back panel mean that you can't use the back panel to stand the radio up. As portable operators, you don't usually bring a chair or table. Now look and see how hard it is to use the FT817 if you don't have those. Not very good posture at all. And stand the radio on its back and look what happens. You have to sort of sit like this and it is all very very awkward. In contrast, see how easily this radio is to use. Speaker in line with the operator, which really makes a difference if signals are poor. A tuning control and a volume control. Very easily accessible. And the dial is easily readable. The Kodan 6924, an HF transceiver for outback communications. It might inspire your next QRP project, as there's some great features. First of all, the case very rugged with a hinged lid. It won't get lost. The lid closes the controls to protect them. There's a compartment for the microphone. You might also be able to coil up a wire antenna as well. A front facing speaker that projects the audio to the user and is definitely an advantage when in communications. Antenna socket, it's on the panel. Both a SO239 and terminals for an N-fed wire antenna. 
No need for an external antenna coupler or SWR meter either. There's a coil in series with the antenna which is switched. You switch it for maximum brightness on the indicator. What could be simpler? And large, well-spaced knobs. Very rugged and easily able to be adjusted even if your hands are very cold. The Kodan's a great radio to use and many amateurs have converted it to 80 and 40 metres. QRP designers would do well to copy some of its features. You might not have designed the circuit, but specifying your own box, knobs and sockets gives you choices to make a rig that suits your operating style. The satisfaction of operating such a rig is a pleasure that money cannot buy.